Hello there again, Dan Calloway here from the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and today I want to talk about uh, Linux file permissions. Uh, I'm a Windows uh, 10 Pro machine right now, main PC, but I've got access to my Arch Linux laptop through uh, MOBA Xterm. I'm going to fire that up right now and get into it today, but what I want to talk about is Linux file permissions, uh, the normal scheme of Linux file permissions. Uh, how that works and how sometimes you cannot do what you want to do with just basic Linux file permissions in the Linux system uh, regardless of the distro that you're using uh, and you have to resort to something else uh, as a Linux administrator and that's something else is called the Access Control List uh, ACL. So let me get into the MOBA X term. This is a application in Windows that lets me uh, get into Linux. Let me bring it up to full screen. And let me go ahead and start the uh, SSH into that. Uh, let me go ahead and close that and bring that up. And then let me uh, go ahead and change the view. Let's zoom in a little bit. Make that a little larger for you. Okay, so let me go ahead and type in an ls-lh here. Uh, I'm a data pioneer on my Arch Linux system. So you can see everything that I have under uh, that uh, home data pioneer. And I'm in that directory because I can do a print working directory. And you can see it says right here, home data pioneer. Okay. Um, what I want to do is uh, I want to get into the scenario of what I want to talk about today. Uh, but before I do that, let's, let's look briefly at some file permissions. Uh, everything on the Linux system is really considered a file. Uh, even a directory is considered a file in Linux. And so here I have a sandbox directory. Okay, it's got the forward slash trailing on the end here. Uh, and you can tell from the permissions that it's rwx, r-x, r-x. What does that mean? Uh, the rwx means read, write, and execute. And then it's in its first position here in front of the uh, in this particular area of the file description, or in this case, a directory description. And so that represents the user, okay, the user owner of that directory. So the user owner of this directory is the first position here in this column, which is Data Pioneer, that's me. And then the group owner of this particular directory is Data Pioneer as well. So Data Pioneer and Data Pioneer. Now, so that means the user owner permissions on this particular directory is read, write, and execute. So I can read, write, and execute this directory. The execute here for directory means I can get into the directory. For a file, it means I can run the binary or whatever it is or execute the file. But for a directory, it's a little different in Linux. It means that I can peruse and del delve into or CD, if you will, into that directory. Without that X there, I would not be able to CD into the sandbox directory. Okay. In the second position, you've got R-X. What does that mean? That means that I can that the uh, group owner, which is Data Pioneer as well, or anyone assigned to Data Pioneer group, can read and execute the file, but they can't write to it. So they can't write anything into the uh, home data or the sandbox rather uh, directory. Uh, under Data Pioneer. And then in the last position here for Sandbox, it's Read Execute, uh, and the middle part is Dash, which means there's no permission. And so everybody else in the world can read the Sandbox directory and execute, in other words, get into it, CD into it, but they can't do anything. They can't write to it. All right. Another way to look at this, that's the symbolic notation okay for the permissions on the sandbox directory uh, another way to look at that is numerical you can do a numerical uh, notation as well for the uh, permissions read has a value of four write has a value of two and execute has a value of one and so this is four six seven so this is seven five and five so the directory here has permissions of seven five five and that's typical of all directories, uh, typical standard uh, permissions on a directory in the Linux system. Okay, so that's that's what we're talking about here on assignment of Linux uh, permissions 
in um, in the Linux system. I want to bring up a, a document that I have uh, to get into today's uh, demonstration. And what I've done is I've created uh, or will here, and uh, I'll show you how to do that. And create a, a scenario uh, of a small business that is, uh, a, you know, it's fictitious. But today's uh, particular uh, video is about uh, handing out permissions in Linux. And so let's look at the scenario. I'm just going to go ahead and read this. A small business, Dynatron LLC, which has four employees, is running Linux on a Linux workstation, LAN, tied to desktops for each employee, rather than Windows 10 Pro and separate PCs. Each employee will need their own Unix account and password on the Linux workstation. Okay, it's standard. Here's some background information. The technical point of contact for the company is also the owner and president of the company, Mark Showalter. The Linux distro of choice here, selected by Mark, is Arch Linux, and that's what we're using on my laptop. The employees share files with one another over the small business LAN, which is not integrated into Windows or Active Directory domain services. So we're standalone Linux here. There are three major departments within Dynatron LLC sales department, the business department, and marketing. The sales manager is Gloria Steinberg, the business director is Thomas Harrison, and the marketing director for the company is Roger Penrose. Okay, All of management within Dynatron LLC should be able to access and read respective files and directories within a directory called group accounting. All right, so that's a special directory that uh, Mark Showalter uh, has uh, set up in the Linux system that he wants some people to have access to, other people have limited access to, and some people have no access to. And that's where he keeps various files uh, that are important for his managers and employees within those manager groups uh, and the departments within uh, Dynatron. However, within the group accounting directory are subdirectories and files that only employees of the business department and sales department should be able to read and write. The business manager, Thomas Harrison, should be able to create new files under group accounting, and only members of the business group and sales group should have access to them. No one in the marketing group should have, ac should have access to these new files. All right, so if you're not, uh, if you're in the marketing group, you shouldn't have access to the files at all. The CEO, of course, can access any files under the group directory. All right. So Roger in marketing has recently hired a, a temp, Brian Hartwell, uh, whom he wants to be able to read and write files in his home directory in order to fulfill his job description, which is an exception to the rule regarding all other employees in the company. Typically in the Linux system, your home directory is yours and no one else's, and nobody else can get into that directory and uh, write anything to it. In this case, Roger's got a temp that he hired, and he wants Brian to be able to get into his temp, his home directory on occasion and read some things that are in there and also write to it. So um, we're going to look at how to do, go about doing that. So let's walk through the steps of what needs to be done in order to set up this Linux scenario uh, for Dynatron LLC to meet the company's needs and maintain privacy and accountability within each department and the company as a whole. All right, so I've got a chart here, an organizational chart uh, and Linux permissions. Let me just pull that up. And here is the chart that I created. And this is for Dynatron LLC. On the left-hand side over here is the organizational chart. You've got the CEO, President and CEO, Mark Showalter here at the top. And underneath that, you've got three departments, sales, business, and marketing. Uh, sales manager here is Gloria Steinberg. Uh, the business manager is Thomas Harrison, and the marketing director is Roger Penrose. And then, of course, under uh, the marketing director himself, he's got a temp that he hired, uh, Brian Hartwell. And so that's the current organizational chart or view for Dynatron. On the right-hand side, I've listed out some of the permissions that we need to set up here in the system. Uh, here are the departments, here are the directories, and here are the permissions. So under the president of the company, uh, the directories under group and the accounting subdirectory of group, um, the CEO has read, write, execute permissions on the group directory and below. For the sales department, 
uh, that group accounting directory uh, here has read write permissions, read write execute permissions as well. Okay. For the business department, uh, the group accounting uh, directory, uh, the manager of the business department uh, has read write execute permissions as well. All other managers under group accounting is only read and execute. So sales and business are the only two that have read, write, execute for group accounting. All other managers have read and ex execute only. All right, and we'll take a look at how to go about doing that. Under the marketing department, uh, the, home, the home directory of Roger Penrose, which is home Penroser, um, he has read, write, execute permissions uh, to that marketing uh, home directory. And Brian Hartwell, his uh, temp, um, has also been given read, write, execute, or will be, for his home Penrose er. That's Roger Penrose, Penrose R. Um, home directory here, okay? So he's giving Brian the read, write, execute permissions on his home, home directory as well. And then all others will have no access whatsoever into Roger Penrose's home directory, all right? So let's look at the steps that we need to do to go about uh, setting this up. First of all, uh, I need to establish, uh, and that's not step one, but I'll go ahead and do that. Um, I need to establish the group and accounting subdirectory uh, and set that up for us, all right? So let me get into a super user and uh, let me uh, clear the screen here. And uh, hopefully this is big enough that you can see it. So what I want to do here is I'm the root right now. And how do I know that? If I can do a PWD, I'm in the present working directory's home data pioneer, but who am I? So let me run a who am I? And you can see that I am root right now. Okay, so I have root privileges on the system. So I should be able to do anything. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the directory using uh, make dir group. Well, actually, let me do both at the same time. I'm going to do a make dir dash p and then I'm going to do group counting. All right. And so now I should have a, a group directory under the root and also an accounting subdirectory under group. So let's take a look at that. There's, uh, oh, let me get out of that and go to root directory. And let me do an LSLH on that. Okay. So you can see we have our group um, directory here. The owner of that directory is root, the group owner is root, and then here are the permissions, 755, okay, which are the standard permissions. All right, so let's look at, uh, let's get into group, and let me do a listing on that, and you should see that we have an accounting directory as well. So we were able to create not only the group directory, but also the accounting subdirectory in one fell swoop. And the way that was done is this command right here make dir dash p uh, and then space forward slash group forward slash accounting so that creates both at the same time uh, so you don't have to do them separately all right okay so now that we've done that we've got that set up let's go back to our diagram or our uh, scenario and we need to create uh, following user directories user accounts we need to create an account for the president for the sales manager, for the business director, for the marketing director, and for the temp employee. Now, what I've used here as a naming, naming convention, if you will, for the accounts, is I've taken the last name and then first initial as the username. So Showalter M is the president. Steinberg G is uh, Gloria Steinberg's account. Uh, Harrison T is Her Thomas Harrison, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, okay. And so what we need to do is we need to give each uh, user a home directory and then all the users in that uh, their home directory, respective home directory, should be uh, able to access these folders here, desktop, uh, documents, uh, downloads, and public. All right. Um, and we also want to, in step one, it says with the name and title as a description in the system. So not only do we want to create the home directory and the account for, you know, Mark Showalter, but we also want to create a um, 
a comment, if you will, uh, a description of who Mark is and what his title is uh, when we do set up that account. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, set up the first one. Let me get back in here. Now I'm still root, so let me clear the screen. And so now what I want to do is I want to create Mark Showalter and create it in, in the way that I described earlier. And so here uh, the command to use is user add. Uh, and then I want to create the directory. And I want that directory, home directory, to be home and Showalter M. Okay. Uh, I also want to uh, create that home directory at the same time I create the directory structure, so I'm using a dash or tack m. If you don't know uh, what all the options are for user add, you can do a man user add. I'll do that in a moment to show you that. And so m will create the directory. Uh, I also want to create a separate scale directory for the user, a skeleton directory. The skeleton directory is basically the structure underneath the home directory. I'll show you that in a moment as well. The option for that is dash K, all right? And then I am telling it to not use the standard directory of scale, Etsy scale, okay, for the subdirectories underneath the home. But I have created a separate one already called scale dynat, D-Y-N-A-T for Dynatron. And that's going to pull in the folders that are in the scale dynat direct subdirectory. And I'll show you that in a moment. All right. And now after that, I want to do a comment as well for a description. So I'm doing a tax C and then the uh, mark or CEO, comma, mark Showalter. Okay. And um, also, I've yeah, I don't need anything else. CEO Mark Showalter, and then the name of the user account, which is Showalter M. All right. And so we have user add, TAC D for the directory, which is home Showalter M. TAC M, in other words, modify that and create that directory in the system. TAC K, which is to use the Etsy scale dynat directory for the uh, information that goes into that home directory underneath. Home show Walter M. And then tag C for a description so that it shows up the CEO Mark Show Walter. Um, and then the name of the user itself, which is Show Wall M. Walter M. Okay. Hit the enter key and it created that. We had no errors here. So we know that that was created successfully. Now let's do that for the remainder of the uh, users. And so let's pull up the uh, entire command. I did that with the up arrow. And let's go all the way back out here, and I'm going to go back to the home directory here. And the next person I'm going to pull up is Steinberg, okay? And so Steinberg, uh, and so we have home Steinberg. Now, Gloria Steinberg is, let's go back, Gloria Steinberg is the sales manager, all right? And so it's sales manager, Gloria Steinberg. Okay. And then um, her user name or account rather is Steinberg GG. All right. So hit enter and that creates Gloria Steinberg. All right. Let's look at the next one. And let's go back out here. Let's get rid of this. And uh, doing the up arrow makes makes it very quick. You don't have to worry about retyping a lot of stuff, making mistakes. Let's look at the next one. Uh, Thomas Harrison is the business director. All right, so we're going to do Harrison T. And we go back out here, business director. Thomas Harrison. And then H A R R I S O N T, enter. So we've created uh, Thomas Harrison's account. And let's go back out now. We've got one more to go, I believe. And let's eliminate that. And so let's set up now the, uh, we got two more to go. Roger Penroses, he's the marketing director. Let's set up his account. 
And so that is uh, P-E-N-R-O-S-E-R. -E and he is the marketing director. Roger Penrose. And P-E-N-R-O-S-E-R. -E okay. All right. And then the last person we need to set up is that temp employee for... Um, Roger Penrose. So let's go back and let's get his username, and that is let me confirm this. Uh, Brian Hartwell, which is Hartwell B. Okay, and so it's Hartwell B, and that is the marketing temp. Brian Hartwell and Hartwell. B. Okay, so now we've got all of the accounts set up. We've got the home directories created. We've got supposedly or hopefully um, from the Etsy Skell underscore Dynat directory, we have um, the structure that should fall underneath those directories. So let's look at that particular directory at the moment here. Uh, let's CD into Etsy. If I CD into Etsy Skell, uh, you can see Let's do a long listing. You can see everything that's underneath that. That's my directory, Data Pioneer, on the Arch Linux system. That's everything that gets added to my directory. I'm, I'm doing a basic tutorial here for this particular example, so I'm not worried about all this other stuff here. Uh, I don't want uh, Mark Walter or Thomas Harrison or Gloria Steinberg to have all of this underneath their home directory like I do. Um, so what I've done is I've created a separate one. And uh, let's get into that. CD Etsy uh, scale underscore Dynat. Notice that that's where I have right up here uh, for dash K Etsy scale Dynat. Okay, telling it to, to pull that structure for the home directory from this particular directory, not Etsy scale. Okay, and so let's uh, let's take a look at that. And let's do a listing of that, and there it is. So it's basic. It's uh, desktop, documents, uh, downloads, public, okay? Uh, in addition to that, and something I didn't tell you, is in the documents directory, let's descend into that. I have two files already set up in there, uh, and those two files are a disclosure agreement.txt and a privacy.txt document. Every person has these two documents in their home directory now. If we go and look at uh, the home directory for another user, we'll see that that they have that. All right, so let's let's clear screen, and um, let's go back to CD Home now, and let's look at our home directories. And you can see that we have a home directory now for every user. All right, and we have so let's descend into Roger Penrose's. Uh, I am root, so I should be able to do that. When it home, or actually, I'm in the home directory, so let's uh, descend into Penrose. All right, and let's do an lslh, and you can see that we have the desktop, the documents, the downloads, and public. And then in the documents directory, if I cd into that, uh, yeah, those two files are there as well uh, disclosure agreement and privacy statement or privacy.txt. Let's check another one just to make sure. Let's uh, CD into Steinberg, okay, and do an LSLH on that as well. There are the directories. Let's get into the documents directory here for Steinberg, and we should see those two files as well. So, what that uh, K option with the Etsy um, scale underscore Dynat did was it put duplicate folders, directories if you will, and duplicate files under those uh, for every user. So we didn't have to do that multiple times. We did it in one fell swoop. All right, so we've taken care of that option now. The only thing we haven't done is the next step in the process. We've got this created now. Um, we have those folders or directories underneath each user, which is good. But now we need to establish Unix passwords for all, all of these users, all right? And so the way to do that, let's go back in here. Let's do clear the screen. And I'm still root. How do I know that? Okay, there I am, root. And then my per 
uh, current working directory here, or print working directory, which is uh, home Steinberg documents. Doesn't really matter where I'm at, uh, but I'll go ahead and get into my the root of the file system here. Um, and let's clear screen again. All right, so now we need to create Unix passwords for each user. I'm going to make this simple, and I'm just going to um, uh, use password as the password. So let's do let's do Showalter Steinberg Harrison. Okay, so let's do um, Showalter first, and to create a password for user, um, we use the passwd command for password. Stein or uh, Showalter. M, okay. It's asking me what is that new password. It's going to be just password, and it's going to ask me to retype it, and it's done. So it's successfully updated. All right. So let's do the password now for Steinberg, and let's do password. Okay, done. All right. So now let's go to the next person. Uh, which is remember here Harrison T okay all right and Penrose let's get Penrose his password you would not do this in a normal situation okay you would uh, give uh, much stronger passwords and we separate passwords for each user All right, and then one last password that needs to be created, and that is for Brian uh, Hartwell. So that's Hartwell B. Password. Password. Okay. So let's confirm a few things here um, that we have set up now for these users. We looked at the home directories, and we found that indeed those uh, have whoops have been set up properly. Okay. Let's look at now the user accounts. Now the user accounts are listed for password purposes under a file called, it's a file, not a directory, called Etsy password. Etsy P-A-S-S-W-D. And if I run that, uh, you can see down here at the bottom in the newly created uh, users, <coughs> excuse me, we've got um, Showalter M with an X after it. Steinberg, G, X, Harrison T with an X, Penroser with an X, and Hartwell B with an X. Okay, what that X means is that there's a password set up in the system for the user. It's just not showing you what that password is. All right. Also notice that, for instance, under Steinberg, out here in the uh, description of that user, uh, in addition to the, uh, the owner's PID and the group owner's PID, there's also the uh, title of that user, which is Sales Manager Gloria Steinberg. Okay, I put that in the C switch, if you remember, for every user. And then here's the home directory of Gloria Steinberg, home Steinberg G. And then what I didn't tell you as well is that you can uh, designate something other than the default uh, bash shell for a user. And typically in a Linux system, the bash shell is what every user gets. And that's located in bin bash. And so I didn't change that here in this case. I let every user I created in the system get the standard shell, which is bin bash. And so I didn't change it. But you can, there's a way to change that. You can go to bin C shell or uh, Z shell or whatever you want to do. Uh, I didn't do that here. And so you can see that, for instance, Penroser here is the marketing director, Roger Penrose. Hartwell B is the marketing temp, Brian Hartwell. So we've, we've done that and we've... Uh, We've done that correctly in the system now. Okay, there's another file that shows uh, the encrypted password, just to make sure that that password is working, uh, and uh, that is a file which is located in Etsy uh, Shadow. Okay, and if you come down here in the Etsy Shadow file, you can see that the owner, CEO of the company, uh, Dynatron does have a password and that's indicated with the uh, uh, prefixing uh, dollar sign followed by six okay and then ending in dollar sign and then there's the encrypted password here you can't read it uh, it's not readable and that's by design but you know that a password has been set up now we know that we set up password for every user 
But notice the encryption is different for every user. So that it's not, you know, you're not going to see the same encrypted text here, um, even though you're using the same password. And that's by design as well in the system. All right. So there's no way for a user, if they get into, uh, you know, root privileges and get in here and take a look at this, there's no way for them to determine, you know, what that is. Or even if they don't have root privileges, if they can get in here, they're not going to be able to figure that password out. And that's set up for every user. Uh, Harrison T, for instance, at the dollar six dollar, followed by the encrypted text, which means he has a password in the system set up as well. If there was no password set up in the system, you wouldn't see that. All right. So let's get back out of here. Let's clear the screen. Let's get down to the next level of what we need to do in this scenario. And that's step number three, and that's to create the following groups and assign the following members to them. All right, so there are four groups here in the system, admin, sales, business, and marketing. Admin is the CEO. Sales is uh, Gloria Steinberg. Uh, business is Thomas Harrison. And marketing is Roger Penrose. Okay, and he has a temp under that. Um, the admin group uh, is Shoal Walter M. He's the CEO and president. The sales group, you want Steinberg G to be a member of that group, but you also want Showalter M, the CEO, to be a member of that group as well. And the reason for that is you want the CEO to be able to get into anything that sales has, as well as the same rights that Gloria Steinberg has. And then same with business and the same with marketing here. All right, so let's go ahead and set up those groups as well. So let's get back to the uh, um, mobile X term. And how to set up groups in uh, the system is as follows. But first, let's take a look at the file that controls or lists out the groups, if you will. And that is a file. We're going to cat that file, Etsy group. All right. And you can see that we have uh, every user has his own group. All right. So we have Walter M, Steinberg G, Harrison T, Penroser, and Hartwell B. Here are, uh, these are the new groups that have shown up in this particular file called Etsy group uh, by virtue of the fact that when we created the uh, home directory and the user uh, account for these particular users, uh, they do get their own groups there. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to add ad admin, sales, business, and marketing. All right, so let's uh, clear the screen. And so to add a group, we do a something uh, command rather called group de, uh, group add, group add, um, and then I'm going to use attack a capital G. What that means is is in an addition to the standard group that this user is assigned to, we want to append to that group uh, to that user another group. All right, and so. For uh, Showalter, we want to uh, add the group uh, admin, and then Showalter. Well, actually, we're just not doing that yet. Um, we want to just add the groups first. So let's do a group add admin. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, and now let's do group admin sales. All right, so we're adding the, uh, a group called Sales. We're going to add another group called Marketing. And then we're going to add another group called Business. Okay, so we have four groups that we created. Let's go back to that file. You should see these groups now that have been created. We have Admin. We have sales, we have marketing, and we have business. We have created those four additional groups. Let's go back out. And now what we want to do is we want to, according to the scenario, we want to add these individuals to these groups. So we want to put Showalter in the admin group first. Okay. So to do that, we're going to use another command in Linux called user mod. All right. And then we're going to do uh, attack AG. And then we're going to put the user, the group itself, admin, and then show Walter M. All right. So now what we've done with this command is we have, since we have admin already created, 
we've added Showalter M as an, an additional group to the group called Showalter M, or called admin. Showalter M is already a member of Showalter M, but we're also adding him as a member of admin. Now, if we didn't put the DAC A, the little a in front of the capital G, which is the primary group for uh, Showalter M, which is Showalter M, then what would happen is, is if we left the, the little a out here in the command, we would simply replace the primary group for Showalter M with admin. So Showalter M would no longer be a member of uh, the primary group Showalter M. He would then revert to a new primary group called admin. The fact that we're putting the little a in front of it here means that he's a member of both, and we'll see that here in a moment. Okay, We're appending uh, his group uh, membership. All right, so now let's go and let's add the next person. And so here we're adding, let's go back to this document. We're adding uh, Steinberg and Showalter M to sales, okay? And so let's do sales. And then we're doing, um, let's go back again, forgetting here, Steinberg, okay? Steinberg, all right? So we've added Steinberg to the sales group. We're going to do another user mod, and we're going to add Showalter M to that group as well. You can only do one at a time. All right. So now Showalter M is actually a member of three groups. His own, it's a primary, admin as the secondary, and sales as the tertiary. All right, so let's do user mod. The next one we need to add uh, to a uh, group here is um, Harrison T to business. So let's go back. And so business, Harrison T. And we're making that an appended group, not primary. All right. And then let's go back over here and let's uh, look at marketing. And that's Roger Penrose. All right. And so we also have another one in the marketing. Remember, that's uh, Brian Hartwell. So Brian Hartwell is also a member of marketing. Okay. All right. So now let's go back out to the file that, that, that lists out the groups. And let's cat that file. And as you can see here, um, under the admin group, we have Showalter M. And he's the only member of that group. All right. Uh, we have sales, which is Steinberg and Showalter M. I forgot that I didn't add uh, Showalter M to marketing and business. I'll take care of that in a moment. So we have marketing here, which is Penroser and Hartwell B, and then business, which is Harrison T. Now I've got to add Showalter M to marketing and business. So let me do that right now. Um, let's go back out to this command here for marketing, and let's add Showalter. M as well, and then let's go back out to uh, business, add Showalter M too as well, and now let's go ahead and list out again uh, the group membership, and you can see that under marketing we've now added Showalter M to both of those, so Showalter M, the CEO, is a member of all of these groups, admin, sales, marketing, and business, and then you've got the managers uh, under their respective departments, and then you've got uh, Brian Hartwell as a temp, ma uh, temp employee under marketing who needs to be a member of that group as well. Okay, so we've taken care of that. Let's clear the screen on that. Let's go back out to my document here and see what else we need to do. Now in step four, we need to create the following directories and dummy files in the system for testing. We've already done that. I've done the annual budget.txt and the profit and loss statement.txt under uh, group accounting um, and uh, no I haven't done that or have I let me just verify that I did it under the documents directory so let's get into group accounting let's see if you have anything in there uh, no we don't have that and so let's go back out and we need to create two files uh, under group accounting, which is the annual budget dot text and profit and loss statement dot text. All right. So let's create. Uh, let's touch uh, annual budget dot text, 
And let's touch another file, which is the profit and loss statement dot text file. All right. So if we do a, a listing now, we should see an annual budget dot text and a profit and loss statement dot text file located underneath the group accounting um, directory. All right. The the owner of this of this file is root. The group owner is root. The owner of the profit and loss statement is root, and the owner of the group owner rather of the profit and loss statement now is dot um, text is root as well. The permissions on this file is that the root user has read write permissions, but not execute. Um, read write the uh, group owner has read only, and the everybody else has read only as that as well. Now, it said in the uh, document here that uh, Mark Showalter should be able to um, have read write execute uh, here, read write execute for group accounting. All right, and so we need to make sure that uh, in order to do that, we need to uh, make uh, the CEO the owner of um, and group owner of group accounting. All right, and so let's um, go back out here. Right now, root is the owner and group owner of both of these files. Is uh, if we go back out beyond that, and let's look at group itself. Uh, you can see that root is the owner of the group directory, and root is also the group owner of the group directory, and all subdirectories underneath that supposedly. Uh, let's get into accounting. We're on a listing. Oops. Where am I? PWD. Okay, let's CD into group accounting. And let's run a listing. Actually, let me go back out one more. I got up one more. And let's done a, run a listing on accounting. You can see that root is the owner and group owner as well of accounting. All right. So let's go back up one level, back up to the root uh, of the file system. And let's make, let's run the listing again. And let's make Roger, I mean, uh, Mark Showalter, the owner and group owner of this particular directory. All right. To do that, we need to change uh, the ownership. Okay. I'm, I'm root right now, so I can do that. And so what I'm going to do is use the chone command to change ownership. I'm going to use the recursive uh, option here. Uh, so that anything in group and underneath group will be owned by what, whoever I tell it. All right. So I want to tell it to do Showalter M. I want to use a colon here, which means that that says make Showalter M the owner and group owner. All right. So I don't have to list both of them. If I wanted to have a separate group owner, I could put the separate group owner's user ID here or username here, but I choose to have Showalter M. Uh, to be both. All right, and then the directory is group. All right, so that means anything the group directory and anything under the group directory and files now will revert to Showalter M as the um, owner or user and group owner of the of the file or directory. Okay, so let me hit enter. And now let's, uh, we, where are we? Let's see, we're in the root of the directory. Let's go out to group and accounting. Let's go back to group first. Okay. And let's list out that. And you can see that Showalter M is the owner and group owner of accounting here. If I go out one more and run a listing of that, you can see that in the group group or the directory group rather Showalter M is the owner and Showalter M is the group owner of group all right and the, the uh, read write execute for the group directory if I do a CD into accounting do a listing whoops I'm back in the root directory I think yeah CD into group accounting Let's do it to group and then I can look at accounting. 
and let's do a listing of that. Uh, you can see that uh, read, write, execute for Mark Showalter as the owner of the group, of the directory, accounting, and then group owner as well for accounting is read and execute. Okay. All right. So uh, and then let's look at the files. And so I'm in group now. So let's go into accounting. And let's look at those files. And you can see that for these two files that were created by root, now Mark Shulwalter is the owner and group owner of those two files. Uh, but uh, and that he also has read write um, permissions. Okay, uh, he was supposed to have read write and execute permissions. Anything underneath uh, group and accounting as well. Uh, so to take care of that, what I can do uh, so that he has execute permissions on, well I'm going to do that on an ACL, so let's not worry about that right now. Okay, so now we're coming down to the meat of the video here. Um, we're going to create additional files under group accounting and then after creating these additional uh, files we're going to look at creating some um, things called the access control list underneath uh, this particular group accounting subdirectory that allows uh, varying permissions here uh, to occur that don't occur na naturally under the standard permission scheme for Linux which is group owner and and all others okay okay uh, moving right along um, shown you that in the group directory here uh, under the uh, root of the file system Shilwalter M is the owner and group owner of group and also of accounting now underneath the files um, for directories in Linux uh, the standard or typical um, directory permissions is 755 okay that's by convention uh, and that's due to masking. So that's read, write, execute, read, execute, read, execute, as in the case of here for accounting. But for files, it's different. The uh, permissions on files is different than it is for directories. And that's by design. And the permissions are 644 by default. So let's get into uh, the accounting directory here. Let me get back into this and um, get into accounting. Actually, I think we're already, are we in accounting? No, CD into accounting. And let's take a look at the files there. And you can see that they are read, write, read, and read. So that's six, four, and four. And that's uh, by convention typical. All right. So that's going to be a little bit different from what we have here, where it said, and all others is, you know, a dash 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 um, that's going to really be R dash dash uh, so that's an error in my diagram just ignore that um, for files you know the only permissions here of read write execute for CEO and for the business group and the sales they're going to be for the actual group and accounting only not for the files within that all right uh, so we just want to make sure that's clear with you um, okay so let's go back out and um, Here's the dilemma that we have. Uh, we want to have, we want to give the business group and the sales group read, write, execute permissions on the group accounting directory. Right now, the CEO Mark Schulwalder has the read, write, execute on the group and accounting uh, directories. Okay, group uh, directory and accounting subdirectory. Um, Remember I told you that, you know, with the standard permissions in Linux, uh, you only have one uh, user or owner of a, a directory, a file, or a directory, uh, and a directory being a file by convention in Linux. Um, and you only have uh, the ability to uh, express the permissions on one group owner, okay, of a file or directory. So that's going to be a presenting a problem for us here because we've got Showalter M for both here. All right, and even if I wanted to change the group ownership to business, all right, uh, to give the group owner the same uh, RWX, which is read, write, execute. In the case of standard permissions for um, 
a directory, it's read and execute for the group owner anyway, uh, although that could be changed. But then again, that still presents a problem because um, you want to do the same for sales. And so you can't add business and sales in here. You can't give business and or sales ownership of, of every directory in group and accounting because Shell Walter M is the owner of that particular uh, directory. Okay, so that presents a problem, but there is a way around that problem. And the way around that problem is to hand out permissions in Linux using something called an access control list. If we go out to uh, look at a man page here of um, set fackle, which is the command that is used to set the access control list on a file, that's the set file ACL, uh, set file access control list. If we do a man page on that, you can see that um, the set fackle command in Linux sets file access control list. Okay, and there are various switches that you can use. You can use the B switch to remove all previous, all extended ACL entries. You can use the dash K or the K option here to remove the default. And there is a distinction between the non default ACL and a default ACL. And, and basically the, the difference between a regular access control list and a default access control list is that the default access control list will cover permissions on anything that's created after the ACL is set. So a regular ACL will only cover files and folders that are in place. All right. uh, whereas the default ACL will also hand out those same permissions to future files that are created, and we'll show that here in a moment. The D option is the default for creating that default ACL. Okay, it says all operations apply to the default. Uh, and you can use the recursive uh, option here as well to apply operations to all files and directories recursively. Um, but remember that they cannot be mixed with restore, which is up here. We, had, we didn't really look at that, but it can't be mixed with restore. Um, and they cannot also, here's restore file. Uh, they can all also not apply to any future files if you just use the recursive option. So you need to use the default option here. Okay, so let's quit that and get back out here. Um, so the way to handle this is we are currently in group accounting. So let's descend upward and get back to the root of the file system. Okay, so we're back to the root. And what, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set a file access control list, a default one, that's going to add um, the sales group, okay, giving them read, write, and execute permissions on group and accounting. All right, and the way to do that is the following. So I'm going to, let me clear the screen, and I'm going to run the set fackle command. And I'm going to use the M switch for modif modifying. And then I'm going to use the D here for the default with a colon, G for group, another colon, and then sales, all right, and then another colon, and then the permissions that I want to give sales. I want to give them read, write, and execute. And then the file or directory that I want to apply the uh, default ACL to, which is group accounting. All right, all right. So let's go over that again. We have setting the FACL uh, and modifying that for the default ACL for the group sales, giving them read, write, and execute permissions on the group and accounting subdirectory. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and apply that. All right, and the command that we can use to look at what we've just done is called get fackle. So we can get get file out, uh, access control list of group accounting. And we can see here that um, on the file group accounting, which is considered a file in Linux, okay, even though it's a directory and a subdirectory, it's considered a file. Everything is a file in Linux. So on the file group accounting, the owner of that group accounting uh, directory is Showalter M. The group owner is Showalter M because we made that happen. The user has permissions of read, write, execute. So Showalter M has read, write, execute, execute permissions. 
Uh, the group owner, which is Shell Walter M., has read and execute, and then everybody else has read and execute. All right. For the default FACL, um, the uh, user, which is sales, anyone in the sales group, okay, have read, write, execute permissions. The default group has read and execute permissions. All right. The default group sales has read, write, execute, and the, I've already gone ahead and set business. So the default group business has read, write, execute as well. I want to speed things up. So I had already done this for business group. So we've got sales and the business group both have read, write, execute access here um, to that uh, group accounting directory. And it's the default um, FACL, not just a regular FACL, a file allocation control list. All right. Uh, so... Let's let's go ahead and test this. So let's go back out and let's list out the uh, where we are right now. So we're at group, and so let's get into um, CD into group accounting. All right, and so we've got the annual budget and the profit and loss statement has two files within that. Uh, what I'm going to do here too right now, I'm root, so I'm going to get out of root and log in as Showalter M to make this a real-time, realistic scenario. So let's do an SU into Showalter M. All right, and so I'm in Showalter M right now, as you can see right here. Uh, if I want to prove that, I can say who am I, and I am Showalter M. Okay. Okay, and so now that we've logged in as uh, Showalter M. And we're in the um, group accounting directory. Let's um, let's go ahead and have uh, Mark Showalter create a new file, new file in this directory, and, and then we can see if anyone from sales and business can actually get into the file and write to it. All right. So let's have um, touch. Uh, let me uh, give me a second. Back in here. Let's touch uh, file one dot text. Let's do a listing here, and we can see that now in the group accounting directory we have file one dot text. It's created by Mark Showalter. Um, and let's uh, go ahead, and we are still Mark Showalter. Let's go ahead and log out. Uh, as Mark and log in as uh, somebody from sales, which is Gloria Steinberg. So let's gl log in as Gloria Steinberg. Okay. Put in the password. All right. And so let's change directory to group counting. And who am I? Just to make, verify that we are Gloria. And also, where are we? Uh, and that we are in the group accounting directory. All right, and let's list that out to show that we are looking at file1.txt there. All right, and so let's see if she can write to that file. And so let's do an echo. Uh, can Gloria Steinberg in sales write to Mark Showalter's file one dot text file uh, owned by him okay and let's uh, redirect that out to file one dot text okay we're already in that directory so file one dot text is all we need let's enter all right and now let's list out the uh, contents again we can see that we have uh, content into that and so let's go ahead and uh, cat that file. All right. And so it says, can Gloria Steinberg in sales write to Mark Showalter's file one dot text file owned by him? And yes, she can. She can. All right. Which means that she has read, write, and execute permissions to file one dot text under the the uh, group accounting directory. All right. So any files that Mark Showalter creates now because of that. Uh, default uh, file uh, access control list, uh, Gloria will be able to write to that file. Now, the question is, Gloria can write to it in sales, but we also gave business the same permissions. Let's see if uh, Thomas Harrison can also write to the file. And so now let's log out 
as Gloria, log in as Thomas Harrison. All right. And uh, who am I? And that's Thomas Harrison. And uh, let's change directory to group accounting. And make sure we're there when we are. And so now can Mark, I mean, Thomas Harrison also write to the file. So let's, let's check that out. Echo, can Thomas Harrison also write to file one dot text uh, owned by Mark Showalter. And let's append that so we don't obliterate the first one. And that's file one dot text. Okay, so we're already in the accounting directory, so that's fine. And now that uh, is, has been written to that file, hopefully, and no errors. And so now let's look at, let's list out again that, and you can see that that file is bigger, so I believe we did write to the file as uh, Thomas Harrison. So let's uh, cat the file. And sure enough, uh, Thomas Harrison was also able to write to that file. Okay? So that's working. Uh, we got read, write, executable access to any future files written. Uh, owned by Mark Showalter in group accounting, which is exactly what we wanted to do here. Uh, giving business and sales rewrite execute permissions to that particular directory. Now, let's test to see if marketing, which should only have read and execute, has the same ability to write to the file. All right, and so let's log out uh, of Thomas Harrison, log in as Roger Penrose. Okay, and write the password in. And so we're now, uh, who am I? We're Roger Penrose. And so let's change directory to group accounting. Okay, just to make sure we're there. And then we are there. Let's list out the contents again of the directory. Okay, we still have the file one um, with 152 bytes in size. Okay, and so now. Let's see if uh, Roger Penrose can write to that particular file, just recently created by Mark. And so uh, echo can Roger Penrose write to file one dot text owned by Mark Showalter. And we'll pin that. Okay, now if if everything works and we don't have an error uh, according to the default file ac access control list that I just set up. I only gave read, write, execute permissions to business and sales, did not give it to marketing, so therefore Roger Penrose should not be able to write to this file and should get a permission denied. And he did. All right, so uh, he got a permission denied. He was not able to write to the file, so he does not have read, write, execute. He only has read and execute. And if we cat the file, just to show you, uh, his writing did not get appended to the file itself. Okay, so this proves that uh, that uh, default file access control list uh, was successful in giving two departments writeability to a file created by the owner of a file, uh, but not did not give the uh, third department the same access. Okay, so in this final phase now, uh, if we go back out to our diagram, we were supposed to set up uh, the home Penroser uh, home directory such that Brian Hartwell, his temp, could access with read, write, uh, and uh, execute access to this home directory and any files in that directory um, for the marketing director, which is uh, Roger Penrose. All right, and so in order to do that, I've, I've done a couple of things. Uh, I did one thing already. Uh, there are a couple of things that are required to make this happen, okay, for the uh, uh, for Hartwell to access uh, Roger Penrose's home directory. As you can see here, Roger Penrose has read, write, and executable, and, and nobody else has anything here. Um, so one of the first things I need to do is I needed to add... Uh, uh, Brian Hartwell to the group Penroser, okay? And so uh, if we go out to um, Cat of Etsy, 
uh, and group. You can see where I've already done that here. From the pen roser uh, group, user rather, I've, uh, or group rather, I've added uh, Cartwell B to that group. And I did that using the command um, user mod a or a little a g pen roser and Hartwell B. And so what that did was that added Hartwell B to the pen roser group as an appended uh, group membership. Okay. And so here, um, where is it again? Hartwell. Here, pen roser. Okay, Hartwell B is added to the pen roser group. All right. We need to do that um, first. Okay. So let's clear the screen there, and let's do um, ls lh here. Bring that back up again. Um, and so the second thing we need to do is for Hartwell to be able to access the uh, home directory of Penrose. Uh, we need to add um, Hartwell B as the uh, group owner of the Penroser home directory. All right. To do that, we're going to need to change, and I'm in root right now, so we need to change ownership of the um, recursively, okay, um, to colon Hartwell B, okay, so that it's the group owner of that particular home directory, Penroser, okay. So we need to change recursively the ownership of home pen roser to Hartwell B so that Hartwell B appears in this position here. Okay. All right. And so to do that, we issue that command. And now if we run a listing again, we see that we have Hartwell B as the uh, group owner of uh, Roger Penrose's home directory. Okay. But we still have problem with the permissions here. It's still dash 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 in that second position. So now we also need to change uh, mode to 770, um, and we need to do that recursively as well. Okay, to 770 for home and rows. Er. Okay. All right. So then let's do a listing there, and now we can see we have. Uh, Brian Hartwell as the group owner and that we have read write execute uh, capability here permissions for that group owner under Roger Penrose's home directory so then now that should accomplish what we're looking at accomplishing here to prove this let's log out as root and log in as Penrose okay so who am I Roger Penrose and we are in uh, Roger Penrose's home directory should be, and you can do that by running a PWD. So we're in Roger Penrose's home directory, and so what I want to do now is have Roger Penrose touch a file in his home directory, and let's list that out. And you can see there it is. There's the file. All right, let's clear the screen, and now let's have uh, Hartwell. Log in. Okay, so now we, who am I? We're Roger, we're uh, Brian Hartwell, and where are we? We are in uh, Hartwell B's home directory. We need to now descend into Roger Penrose's home directory as Hartwell B. Can we do that? All right, so let's cd into home Penrose. Er, okay, and we were able to do that. And so now, where are we? We are in the home directory of Roger Penrose. It's, and who am I? We are Brian Hartwell. So we're descending into the home directory of Roger Penrose as Brian Hartwell. All right. And so if we list out the files now, we can see that there's file one. Can we write to that file? All right. So let's try that. So if I echo, um, can uh, Brian Hartwell write to Roger and Rose's home directory or file one in the home directory?
Okay, no. Permission denied. Okay, so even though he can get into his home directory, he's not able to write to a file that Roger created. All right. Uh, why is that? Well, that's because the permissions are still not permitting uh, Brian Hartwell to write to files that Roger Penrose creates, even though he has access to his directory. How do we take care of that? And the way we take care of that is we set up a user um, default access control list instead of a group access control list. And so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's uh, get out of uh, Brian Hartwell and get into the root direct uh, root uh, for, um, user. Okay, so we're now your root user, and let's uh, get into uh, home directories here and let's list those out. All right, and so now we're looking at uh, all of the home directories. Let's do a get fackle on uh, the home directory of Penrose. Okay, you can see that's the standard permissions here, and this is why uh, Brian Hartwell was unable to write to a file in uh, Roger Penrose's home directory, even though he has access as the group owner of, of that particular directory. He does not have the right ability here to do it, and so um, for a file, just the directory. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a set fackle. Uh, and we're going to do a modification of that. We're going to do a default, and we're going to do a user, not a group. Okay, and we're going to uh, add Hartwell B, all right, with read, write, execute permissions on all files, future files, uh, in that directory. Okay, and so uh, we are applying that to the home Penroser home directory. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're setting a file access control list of a default FACL for the user Brian Hartwell to have read write execute permissions to the home Penroser directory. Alright, and so now that should be set up and let's do a get fackle on home Penroser and you can see that now we do have Default user heart will be has read, write, execute uh, permissions. Okay. All right. So let's uh, get out of uh, as root and get back in as heart will be. And we're now heart will be. Who am I? Heart will be. And where am I? I'm in home heart will be. So let's go into home Penroser. Okay. And so let's verify that we are in the home pen rose or home directory. And let's see if let's list out the files. You can see that there's file one dot text. Um, and let's uh, let's see if he can write to that file now. All right. So echo um, can uh, Brian write to file one dot text. Okay, no, he cannot. Why is that? That's because with the default ACL, he's only able to write to future files, not the ones that are in place. All right, so let's log out as um, uh, Brian Hartwell. Let's log in as Roger Penrose. Okay, who am I? Roger Penrose, uh, where am I? I'm in my home directory. I want to touch a new file. Okay, and let's list that file out. And so we can see that we do have a new file there. All right, and notice that the permissions are different on file two than they are in file one. We got a plus out here, and we have different permissions here. Uh, so this should work. All right, and so let's uh, log out now, log back in as heart will be. And put in the password. All right. And who am I to verify? We are Brian Hartwell. And where am I? Uh, I'm in the Hartwell home directory. So let's descend into the Penroser home directory. OK. 
Okay, so let's verify that. Okay, so we are in the proper home directory now. And now we want to see if he can write to it. So let's echo can um, Brian Hartwell write to file to dot text in Roger's home directory. Okay, looks like he was able to do that. And so let's uh, cat file two. And there, sure enough, he was able to write to the future file, file two, not the one that was in place, file one. And that was performed or accomplished rather by creating a default uh, FACL um, that will allow uh, Brian Hartwell to have uh, read, write, and executable access to any future files that are in Roger Penrose's directory. So we accomplished the last and final step that we needed to do, which is to give Brian Hartwell access to write to files created by Roger Penrose. Uh, and um, if we wanted to go back and, and do that file one, we could just uh, change the permissions on that file for him to access that one as well, but I'm not going to do that. So any future files now Brian Hartwell will be able to access appropriately. So we've accomplished this and this has been a video on handing out permissions in Linux using file access control lists.